Uh, I, I can hear you. Who is it? Uh, this is, this is Dr. Or? Rakesh Jaswal from Chandigarh. Okay. Hi, Rakesh. Who else is there? I think I'm the only one here in the moderator session. Hi. Okay, good morning. Um, this, uh, from, we are coming live from Madras Medical Mission. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have got Dr. Erlen, I mean, uh, Dr. Erlen with me. He will explain the, the, the case. Dr. Jaiswal, you have no company. Last day, last session. So yeah, yeah. But you have a lot of audience well, here. Okay. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Ilamba, 53-year-old dental fan. Uh, he had come four days back with uh, NSTEMI. He presented like Wellen syndrome. And uh, since the pain was ongoing, we took him up for angiogram. Uh, and you can see the angiogram now. Show the angiogram. Uh, the LAD showed a long lesion just a little away from the ostium. The ostium was bad. After that, there was a long lesion. And uh, there were two diagonals arising from the lesion. The second diagonal was also diseased. The first diagonal was... Uh, I mean, uh, non-critical uh, lesion, and there was a tight 90% lesion in the middle lady. Okay. Yes, Next, so we took him up for primary. We passed two wires, one into the LAD and the other into the second diagonal. Then the diagonal was pre-dilated. And then the proximal LAD lesion which was tight was also pre-dilated and then we had planned for a 3 into 38 millimeter stent the stent did not track it was hitting at the proximal LAD next slide uh, then we saw that there was some dense calcium in the proximal LAD which was not allowing the stent to track so then we took a angioscalp scoring balloon and the angioscalp scoring balloon did not enter the ostium of the LAD also. So then we thought uh, if we need to stent, we need to dilate, uh, do a rota and all. During an ACS, it should not be done. So we waited, we put him on uh, GP2BA3 inhibitors, FT-fibrated infusion, waited for two days and now we have taken up the patient. Any comments, any clarification? You had uh, ballooned the diagonal. Did you have any concern regarding any dissection caused there since you were waiting for two days after? Uh, no, no, we had, we had, no, we had, done, we, had, we had done it with a smaller balloon and did not go up very high. Right. And there was no dissection. And what and is your no plan? Dissection. What is and your the plan? Was a, three. Mm, the uh, what's the plan for uh, this now case? Now Dr. Matthews will tell about it. Uh, all of you saw the case uh, and the difficulties they had. The, there was no obvious calcium on the fluoro. I mean, it's a standard case. All of us would attempt the ostium of the LED is free of disease. What we intended to they intended to treat was the the LAD just maybe five millimeters away from the ostium. There is of course a large diagonal with a fair size with the ostial disease. They tried uh, different different balloons to get the ostium go across the ostium and dilate it. They couldn't. 
what all could have been the possibilities, whether it could be an alignment problem or there is a calcium there, we don't know. So today what we have done is we just wired the lesion. I did not take a picture because uh, uh, the guiding catheter we selected was a one size bigger guiding catheter than what they had selected earlier. It was a EBU 3.5, now I have taken an e EBU 4. Come to AP. AP. Uh, give me a test. AP, plain AP. Plain AP. Okay, I'll, I'll, ta I'll take a picture. See, you understand what is happening? The guiding catheter is not engaging into the left main. And I, why did I select a bigger guiding catheter? General is only because they had difficulty in getting even a, a, a non-compliant balloon across the LAD osteal disease. So either there is calcium or there is a deficiency of the coaxiality. So you need a guiding catheter which is more supportive, but unfortunately it is not engaging. Then what do you do? What we, I left the guiding there in that position. I didn't try to manipulate the guiding uh, to engage in this position. I got a wire across. Now we were intending to do an IVUS run. So what I'm doing is I have, the wire is across. I'm getting the IVUS catheter close into the left main without engaging. Once I get that, I am re trying to engage the guiding because it is easier to engage on a guide wire or on a shaft of a device. Small test. Okay. Small test. You saw what I did? Now I got the full engagement. So the, this is safer to do this way because you won't injure the left main, epicranium. Now the catheter has crossed the left main, the disease which we intended to treat. I am taking the catheter down. And uh, I, I was catheter is definitely bigger than uh, the an, a non-compliant balloon. Then why did it cross this time? And I was catheter crossed very easily into the LAD. So that most probably the our problem was not more than calcium. Calcium it was the coaxiality. Now I was will tell us. Okay, go ahead. Now, show the IVUS, please. Okay. Yeah. Pull back. Pull back. Okay. We are pulling it back. Now, watch the... It's, there is some disease in the distal lady, but not too bad. So, there that's calcium, calcium, Matthew. That's the circumferential calcium. Circumferential calcification. Hmm. But uh, it's patchy. Now there is no calcium. It, now again calcium is appearing on the uh, 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock position. No calcium again. Fibrotic plug. Yeah, this, this looks... No calcium. Not very badly diseased. Large vessel. Good large vessel. Yeah, very large vessel. Now, yeah. do the uh, run again. Just play. Okay, now what is uh, what is your uh, suggestion? I can see Ashok also sitting there. Yes, writing. yes, Matthew. Just just came up and missed uh, some of it. Yeah, Ashok. No, I, I said I missed some of it, so not uh, clear about uh, the fact uh, 
of the history, but this is circumferential classification. No, that, uh, make it very simple. This was yeah. This was a case which was attempted. They couldn't deliver uh, a compliant balloon or any other device. Right. So they just did only a balloon dilatation. And now we have interrogated with an IVIS. Now we have to decide what is the strategy. Yeah, and I know that in your hands it would be a rotational atherectomy. No, not necessarily. We, uh, but uh, do we need a rotational atherectomy or not? I want your comment. See, looking at the IVIS once again. Show me, show the picture again, IVIS. I saw the image. Anything which has got a circumferential calcification, I would. Uh, In one part, yes. I would rotoblate, okay. and this is this is pretty much 200. Yeah, this is close to 360 degrees. 270 to 360 degrees is this, and that was in one part. I guess that was the part which was okay. most, uh, which is where where you'd actually have the some the, more calcium coming up. Yeah. And okay. you know, you know one, one principle in life I've learned is that if you think rotational atherectomy, do it. Because uh, when you don't do it, that's when you actually suffer the most. It's not during doing it that you suffer, it's when not doing it that you suffer. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any comments? Rotawa. Okay. Uh, now, see, it's uh, uh, you can use a rota. You, how many of them would like to avoid using a rota? So, so Matthew asked, how many would not use a rota rotational atherectomy in this case? Remember, he's actually failed. So people have been unable to get a stent across it. Uh, Matthew has just seen more than a 270 degree arc of calcification there. Uh, how many of you would not use a rotational atherectomy? If you, if you had a rotational atherectomy and knew how to use it, how many wouldn't use it? Well, there's every, nobody's raised their hands. <coughs> so I guess everybody agrees with the philosophy that if you have and know how to do rotational atherectomy, then you would go ahead with it. Okay. Not a bad idea. So what I'm doing is I have not taken the other wire out. You'll just uh, go by the side of it. I, I'm parallelly by the side of it. See, it just, it just uh, makes it easier for the rotor wire to hug the other wire and go down. And that's why he's not taking the other wire Talk. out. No, no. Leave it, leave it. Talk. Don't take it out. It also just gives, you know, you don't have to inject. You just know the, the guidance for the, the wire to go down. Yeah, you, you can. I, I guess, I think most of us, uh, Matthew, uh, even when we change wires, yep. we, never, we, we sort of send another wire down. So if, you, if uh, the rotor wire later had to be changed, once you've done rotational atherectomy to one of your regular Vokas wires, uh, you, you do the same thing, isn't it? None of us pass a micro catheter and try to change the wires. We just pass another wire down. It's much, you know, as safe and simpler. Yeah. So, give me a test. And not only that, uh, when you get an uh, opportunity to uh, uh, use a bare wire, yeah. I would advise everybody to keep doing that. Hmm. Because it's a good learning process to know about this wire. <laughs> Rather than trying to learn when you have no option. So I can see Dr. Hazelan working with you. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Hi, hi, Zilan. Zilan is with me. And, 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 and he morning, trained sir. with me. <laughs> he, he was the DNB yeah. uh, yes. National Board of Examination Fellow in Interventional Cardiology for two years with me. Zilan, good to see you. Th that's why, that's why he's ta <laughs> taking everything, uh, uh, holding the wire before I could start. <laughs> No, it's good to see the, the, the two some working here. Thank you. Okay. Now what I'll do is, uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday we saw some difficulty 
a slow flow, no flow in an otter. Yes, you did. I, I would like to. Sh how much time? So show. How, well, I mean, a little different technique of using an otter blader sure. rather than going fast down to get uh, rotta bar down. We b believe in slow cutting, give in, in the significant amount of time between cuts so that the artery gets flushed properly. Yeah, we saw that and, and you know, while we did so, not comment in the case, Matthew, just wanted to know whether you have uh, yeah. uh, uh, anything in your, do you have a cocktail in your rotor flush? Do you advise cocktail? Do you think it should have deltaism and nitro all, all there in your, your flush through the rotor? Or do you keep giving those before or after? No. Only, only I keep uh, so Some giving idea. it whenever it is necessary, not uh, in the flush solution. I don't have anything in the flush solution. Right. So that's just, just uh, only saline. And neither, neither the rotor glide or anything at all. You know, so it's interesting. We never found Nothing. A, a need for the rotor glide stuff, etc., or whatever that uh, that uh, creamy liquid was. Uh, we never had it available ever in the last, uh, you know, how oh, 25 years of rotational atherectomy that we've done. Flush on. Yeah, flush. We don't. Can, uh, can you believe? Now what Did I'll I do is yeah. once the bird is in, I. Flush, flush. Matthew, do you realize that it's, we've been doing rotational athletic for 25 years? Yeah. It's amazing. I just thought. Connection. <laughs> what, Ashok? I said it just occurred to me that we've been do doing rotational athletic for 25 years. <laughs> that's, that's amazing for, for a that's technology. 90, yeah, apart, 90, 90. apart from a balloon, nothing has stood <laughs> 25 years. Do you find any improvements in the rotablation over these 25 years? No, it's exactly the same. Precisely the same. Right. Yeah, uh, I mean, you give the, the, the balloon. The, the it's exactly the same. The it's, it's the newer birds are coming. Yeah. yeah. The earlier ones were fixed. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but these the, 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 the only change which has only change. Um, in everything else, the things okay. have improved a lot. And they were they were better sterilizable than these ones. That's all. <laughs> okay, take it out. Put it into. And the of course, our techniques have changed slightly. Yeah, it's more of learning which has improved. And no, also we were, remember those were standalone days. We didn't have. We were doing it in lieu of. Uh, of other technologies and now we just use it as an adjunctive tool and that's there's a difference okay, with that. Okay, just focus here. One, one. So we're focusing and we Once allow again, you to work and save. demonstrating a single operator technique. The left so hand this, pushes the this. bar, right hand keeps the wire out. So watch this, uh, what Matthew does, he, you know, he just does that and just keeps taking the, his both hands are moving in the same, how much he pushes is how much he actually gets the wire out and see the wire in the coronaries is not moving. And uh, no, those who get used to this, it's far more predictable because you're not relying, you're only relying on yourself. Uh, otherwise, if you're relying on someone else to push it in or pull it in, you suddenly have the wire coming out. So this is... Uh, and this is so much more faster. Flip. Is this 1.25? Okay, we are all bars? set. 1.5. 1 1.5. I fin finished. Uh, now what we do is keep checking in between. So the philosophy around here is that the moment you see slow flow, do not push further. Uh, establish okay. flow and then only proceed further, otherwise you're going to proceed to no flow. Okay. There are rare occasions where the lesion is so tight that you call a slow flow, which will only recover after the lesion gives way. But more often than not, that's why Matthew, I think, Matthew, would you agree with that, that if you get slow flow, you stop absolutely. and restore flow? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, 1.5 bar has cut through, there is a 
there was not much of uh, resistance. There was only one or two places where we took a little time to cut. The job of this uh, burr is over. Probably I will do one more uh, polishing run. So this part of uh, teaching is over. Then what I intend to do is take the burr out and have another wire in the diagonal, prepare the lesion well, and then I will probably ask, I will allow you to go to the next lab. Uh, Rajpal is ready. And uh, come back in about 10 minutes, probably we will be ready to show you the bifurcation standing. So, that would that's, that's be good. And Matthew, do, do, do record your breaking yeah. that lesion um, on a cine so that we can see yeah. what sort of pressures it took for the lesion to give way. You know that calcified okay. area. We will do that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And what I intend to use the stand is probably an alpine stand and um, I will use an uh, angioscalped balloon to properly prepare the lesion. Why do I do, intend to do these two devices? Because uh, the angioscalped will give us a much better lesion preparation. The, it will cut through the calcium and we will get a good um, bed to deliver the stent. Alpine stent in this to little tortuous long calcified lesion. It's so much more low profile and, and trackable. This, that will do the job well. Good. Okay. So are, are you shifting us to the other And lab? yesterday, I think I, I missed you. Yeah. Miss, missed you but soon after your case. Uh, we did the response from the public that we need newer stands and we need uh, a newer technology. And uh, everybody voted totally 100% in favor of that. Oh, good. Okay. So yesterday it was that. So now this is another single hand uh, retrieval of burr, as you will see. So this retrieval is again single hand. So all job done. Okay, BMW one. And I, Matthew, you could shift us to the other side, please. Could we go to the other lab? Please, please go to the other lab. Please go to the other lab. Whichever. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so go ahead, Matthew. Can show the pictures, uh, the fluoro images, please? Like expedition lab, okay. not two point two. Uh, after we finish the rod ablation, we prepared the lesion, and then we took a alpine two point. 2.5 into 23. Mm -hmm. ne next, go forward, go forward. And no, previous picture. I, I just, previous picture. Back. Okay, the, as I said, the Alpine, because of the profile and the trackability, tracks so well. Even though in, there was calcium there. Next. Yep. Next. And delivered the stent. Next, post dilated the proximally little bit the higher pressures using the same balloon because we are anyway proximally going to stand. No, I want to go back. Back, back. Go hmm. back. Hmm. No. No, no, go forward. Forward, no, forward. No. Okay. Well, I, well, I now I have to have another wire crossing into the next uh, diagonal. Diagonal. What I am doing is, I got a double loop at the tip of a, a, a um, uh, it was a hydrophilic uh, fielder FC wire, mm. and you saw how the wire was moving. Once again, I'll show that. See. Went into the LED, pull back, turn the wire toward the diagonal, and it went in very smoothly. Next. Yes. And then we pull the other wire back. Next. Which was under the stent. Diagonal. Good. Next. And I j because I have to fix the LED diagonal bifurcation now before I put a 
another stent in the proximal segment. Right. Otherwise, we will get into trouble with one wire underneath and uh, next. So, I took a 2 mm uh, balloon first to cross, but it didn't cross. And this is a 1.5 millimeter balloon. It mm. crossed, uh, it's a, uh, I think, uh, which, stand, Kazuna, which wire? Kazuna. Okay, 1.5 balloon. Next. And it dilated. Next. Go back. Yes, so that is where we are. With a mini track 2. Now I have got a mini track uh, 2, 2 millimeter balloon. 2. And a 2.5 balloon. I'm keeping a 2.5 balloon in preparation for Matthew, I post dilatation. Yeah, I was personally feeling that. Uh, uh, the, you you probably have undersized the stent, and certainly before this diagonal, you sh really need to go up with a 2.75 to higher pressures. Do the proper pot because I think uh, you're undersized for that vessel. Remember, we See, were seeing this on the. No, I, I was. No, we, we we I was that area at the level of the diagonal. I will show you again. It is a 2.5, 2.6. I don't now. Uh, before I. Do that. I can always go back and do the pot. Yeah. Okay. No. Diagonal go up. Or you can now do. Now the, the question is, I'm going to dilate the diagonal ostium and the stem. Yeah. The negative. Negative. And you're going to do a kissing. Okay. Go up. Uh, whether I would do a kissing before the stent or not, I will not. Oh, you can always pot it. I no? would like the stent to be little deformed like this. I can always pot it. My balloon yeah. is across. I will deliver the stent, and I, then I and then I you can pot do the final final kissing. Mm. That's right. Yeah. F uh, give me the fifteen. Yeah. So that is done. Mm. How many minutes we have? You have 15 minutes left. How many minutes we have? 15 minutes left. Okay. Okay. Very good. So I have left the other balloon down there. The hydrophilic wire. Um, Let's have Arun. Arun, why don't you come up on the table and put him as well the loop to for the total occlusion on the other side? I left <laughs> the loop there. I don't want to take the loop off. This is very comfortable for me because the hydrophilic wires can create perforations which I don't like. So we are having the total so occ occlusion experts on the panel. For huh? my own comfort zone. Turn we have to, uh, lots of experts, you, I believe, now in the can panel. Can you turn this mic on, please? Okay. Who all are the additional experts? So, so, have so, so we have uh, Dr. Ashwin Mehta here. That was for, uh, you know, uh, you, on the other side is going on a total occlusion. And uh, so we now have Arun Kalyana Sundram so here on the podium. Now a lot of, lot of people to... Wherever I'm going wrong, please tell me. Hey, you you don't go wrong, do you? The whole audience looks. I do. Looks. See, I didn't. Li Ashok, the room's fairly see full. See how I have gone wrong? I didn't listen to you. <laughs> see the when the the stand comes. Yeah. When it is hitting the other stand. See, it is not going in. Right. Why is it happening? <laughs> it is happening is Under only diluted. because. Uh, because I didn't listen to you. So the proximal part is under dilated. Under dilated, yeah. What, what can we do? So I'll pull the stand back. I'll take the other balloon. Let me see if that will help. Go up. Go up. 20, 24, 26. So never try to push 18, the stand 20, into 20, a side breath. 24. When it is not going in smoothly, negative. So I'll push the balloon back again. Push the balloon down. Yeah. Okay. 
Now let me see. Yes. Now let me see what happens. It did move a little. It did move a little, but it's still I think there's a there's an intertwining and so on and so forth. It, it yeah, I, I, I think it's a wire bias. Matthew? It could be a wire yeah. bias. Yeah. I, uh, unlike the Ashwin, because uh, it's the other balloon went in smoothly. What's the wire in the LED? Okay. Give me the. What's the wire in the LED? Okay. Which, what, which wire is there in LED the LED? LED is a BMW wire. Okay. BMW. So we have 10 minutes left. Yeah, the other suggestion is that to bring that balloon back into the guide catheter and then advance. I think the shaft of the balloon is probably making wire bias more, more uh, difficult. Okay. Which is, which is correct. So I have two, one suggestion, whichever, we will try everything. First so, I will listen to your first advice, bring the balloon back. Yeah. Bring the balloon in the guide and then advance okay. the stent. Okay, done. Now I will advance the stand again. Yeah. Is that the proximal lesion we which have? have the difficulties. The proximal lesion hasn't been dilated. It is the proximal it? lesion yeah, which hasn't been dilated. Uh, yeah. Now what we will do? I will listen to your second. The, the wire is coming out. I am trying to take the. I, I purposely did it to remove the wire bias if it was there. And From the diagonal. And so, then so I will balloon, bring this. So Matthew. From the diagonal. Yeah. What I would have done was brought, bring the LED wire back. I wouldn't have brought the diagonal. Yeah. Correct. Because the diagonal is more difficult to wire. LED, you just bring I it back. LED, back LED wire. I, I would do that way too. Bring the LED wire back. No, I, diag diagonal is already dilated. It won't be difficult. Only this wire tip is little spoiled. Yeah, that's what happens. The wire I, tip I is I can spoiled. always wire it. There is no difficulty. And also, I think that the wire tip was completely spoiled in the diagonal. Yes. Apparently. That, uh, that's right. How's so, what, what is the option now? Take another wire. Yep. Okay. And un unwrap it. Yeah. <laughs> You've you got a wrapping out there. Mm. But Matthew, while doing this, okay. I'd, I'd rather just even dilate that proximal lesion. You know, you've got a I proximal lesion which is there. Might as well dilate that hole properly. Well, you'll have a better access to everything. Okay, I used the LED wire to, to go into the diagonal. Get into the diagonal. Okay. You want to say anything, Arun? Now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I ch ex exchange the wires. Now my uh, a diagonal wire is in the scepter. Okay, let it be there for the time being. Okay, this is the go up on this 2.5. Want a shot? Yeah, go up. Oh. I'm ostium. I'm, I'm pre dilating it a little better. Negative. Take a picture. Okay. Okay. That is done. And what I'll do is 
I'll leave the BMW wire there. I'll take out the LED wire and then rewire the whole thing. Can you have these Why lights, the, the, the headlights off? BMW. Can you have these lights off because we can't see our monitors? Now, Matthew, while you've got this one yeah. wire, try and getting your stent into, into the diagonal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a good I will idea. do that, but I want uh, at least... Uh, You'll get the other wire down. No, don't implant it. Just saying, try and get it into the yeah. diagonal. It gives you the perspective of whether I there's do. anything else obstructing you. But, but the... Yeah. But I have to get these things out first because... Because the, I, I have the stand on the wrong wire. Okay. I'm glad we, all the trouble we have to go through in the bifurcation, which is very simple, is we are going through live so that there is a learning from that. See, there's, there's nothing which is ever very simple. Uh, this is our perception that things are simple because we tend to do it well, but uh, uh, nothing is really simple. You know, how many times we have a simple lesion and we dilate it and suddenly we have a spiral dissection <laughs> all over the place. And then you say, my God, this is a certain happened to all of us. I'd, so, interesting happening on both ends. Uh, I wonder how, how, how Rajpal is doing. And I think, Matthew, a minute into Rajpal, while you keep recording this, huh? we'd like to see where Rajpal is, even for yeah, two minutes. I'll do that. Because we have five minutes left. So, so you tell us how this happens uh, while you're changing. Can we see Rajpal? Hmm? Yes. Matthew, we're with you. We're over the time, but we'll stick around for a couple of minutes to see how you've progressed. See, when you were that side, we did do some work, and we did undo some of the work also. You, so you dilated the proximal lesion? That's right. We did a proximal dilatation using a 3mm balloon. And Correct. Okay. Now uh, we are taking the stand. Okay. On the diagonal. On the diagonal wire. And you wired the LED, you dilated the proximal yeah. lesion, and now the stent into the diagonal. So we'll, right. we'll just watch you do that before we, we stop the, the transmission. The LED diagonal, did, diagonal wire did come off a little bit, but I'll... We are holding on to, give me the stand. And um, what I have done is uh, I have selected a, a newer generation stand. Mm. Which one because is that? The Which other stand was not very smooth. Which one is that? Which one is this? What is the stand we have taken now? It was uh, the plain science. What? Hmm? What stand? Science V. Science. Science. Yeah, Science V. Yeah. Be because we didn't have the uh, optimal sized. Uh, so this is what? What size is this? 2.25? What is the size? 2514. 2514. 2514. Which one is this? This is also uh, not the stand of my choice. This is the, again the second generation Resolute. These are all the difficulties we have with the, the, the older generation stands. I am not happy with the Resolute because I don't have the right size. Talk.
I would have preferred an alpine here also. And whether I, the other option is whether I can take this wire into the LED, track the stent into the LED, pull back a little and then rewire the diagonal is another option left to me. Uh, this is uh, certainly not proving, yeah, you certainly need low profile stents, you certainly need one of, this actually, this brings true to the fact that, uh, yes, we need a variety of uh, new generation, third generation stents when we do complex lesions and the real problem is yeah. going to happen not now. Six months later, we perhaps won't have any of the new low profile, slick, trackable devices. Mm. And that's going to be a challenge when we face heavily okay. calcified bifurcations, so on and so now forth. It's gone, okay. yeah. Ah, there you are. Now, uh, we managed and give me the other balloon. And so, Matthew, uh, we're now going to go off air. We've seen you do that. Yep. I know from here on, everything no. is going to be good. I, you actually going to implant this, do, to get the stand in. do a lovely tap and uh, do a proximal, and the vessel would look good. So, uh, yeah. the plan is what, the mini crush, or what is it? Uh, th th thank you so much, tap. and lovely having you all on the, uh, as advisors. I followed your advice, and I be that became right. Well, you, you, you are a master he already has it anyway. Thank you oh, very I think much. he's already got a stand there, so it's a, it's a tap. Yeah. Yeah. So with these, I think uh, that was a great transmission, Matthew. Great transmission, uh, Rajpal. And uh, we thank you thank for, you on, for on very, very all challenging all cases. Very challenging on cases. On behalf of all my colleagues it's in MMM, Yale and Vijay and all my Cathlab staff, thank you so much. Thank you.